The most recent video is one I feel fell into a trap. One that I don't feel my videos normally fall into. The expectation of content. Now, I don't mean that it didn't meet my idea of quality, though I do think that I could have done better. It's that the video took the form that it did because that's what's expected of myself. Going into the video, I knew I wanted to talk about two things, Crash Team Racing and Mario Kart Wii. What I had to say was... Game good. The issue there is that that isn't really a YouTube video of my style, and in fact they're kind of two separate ideas pushed together for the sake of being chron uh, categorically connected. It wasn't a case of this game is good and this game is good for different reasons, I like both of these games a lot for the same fairly nondescript reasons. They're fun because they're fun. Much like the writing of earlier reviews, I can define the emotion, but I can't describe entirely where that emotion comes from. This is a poor perspective to start writing from, one that will never end up putting a finger on a reason and lack a takeaway. Many videos end up like this, which isn't a problem, so long as these videos are designed with these flaws in mind. You don't need to hide the flaw, and instead incorporate it into the work and make it a part of the piece. I'd imagine that that sounds extremely pretentious, considering we're talking about Vroom Vroom Mascot Man, and when pointed out like I just have, I think you have the right to say that I've got my head up my own ass. The thing is, even if the word creative doesn't apply to your idea of content creator, they both make these choices subconsciously when they're devoid of their own expectations. If you watched a lot of YouTube videos about video games 15 years ago and wanted to make some of your own, chances are your inspiration would have been angry reviews. 10 years ago it would have been Let's Plays, 5 years ago it would have been what is now described as video essays, even if that's anything from Matthew Matosis to State Bentley. In a way you would have been influenced by expectation, but this isn't a part of expectation that I think is at fault. My videos are influenced by funk because those videos spark a sense of passion. Perhaps it's connected to envy, but regardless, I would categorize those as positive or neutral in how it interacts with what you produce. However, if as you were making your video, you felt compulsion to fill out a runtime to a certain minimum because that's what you expected from what you were influenced by, that would be a connection drawn from your ego. You weren't making the work that you wanted to make, you were making the work that's expected from you from within yourself. The latest video suffers massively from the latter. Instead of looking at a pretty humble concept and wanting to share a thing that I like with people, even if I can't really describe it, I tried to morph it into a video that fits within what's expected of me, both from myself and what I assume the audience wants from me. Keep in mind, both of these are merely projections of my own perspective. Now I'm being pretentious. What I assume the audience wants can never truly encompass what the audience will actually think, because it's really a mass of individuals. For me, this meant trying to make the idea larger. Within my own concept of expectation, if a video isn't over 20 minutes, or roughly 7 pages of script, it doesn't have enough meat on the bone to be worth making. This started as attempting to elaborate on game good. One of the issues here is that without a concrete understanding of what you enjoy about a game, you end up with a lot of words that ultimately say very little. A way of finding a little more meaning in that is comparison, drawing from your small understanding of many games to form a more central idea. However, this isn't the silver bullet that it first seems. What you've really produced is a spectrum, not a concept. You're aligning games to form the vision of a point, while saying very little about the game that you wanted to discuss in regards to its own merit. To briefly stray into surface level philosophy, you don't enjoy good games because you've played bad games, you enjoy good games for something more intrinsic. A bad game might make you more able to appreciate what you like in a good game, and can provide clarity in certain specifics by having something to contrast against. But a video sharing what you like requires you to unravel the specifics rather than unravel the contrast. Even though I was well aware of this, as the word count climbed and game count grew, it satisfied my expectations of length and made me lean into more aspects of comparison. The video had ballooned, but it was filled with mostly empty words and many different games. The natural evolution of that is to attempt to give it some structure, connecting them through chronological order. And with that, I could splice in some ideas about corporate incentive and call it a day. Now I had made something that has met my expectations. However, I hadn't made something that I was happy with, and I'd imagine that even if the audience can't put their finger on why, it hasn't made them happy either. 
The core of wanting to share two games that I liked was obscured by attempting to fit it within a certain size of video. And looking back on it now, this isn't how I should have gone about it. While I was editing it, by about the 15 minute mark that I'd realized that I wasn't happy with what I'd made, I had a thought that really this video should have been written from the outset as a retrospective with the intent to discuss corporate intent and brand association within games and how that's changed. Ideally, I want my videos to reflect something. The two Tekken videos reflect how the community responds to what they value in a game and the interaction between developer and community in regards to something adjacent to a sport. The Rising Thunder video reflects the melancholy of work that we'll never see. It's a video that discusses two video game characters, but it's about the parts of a game that we'll never see and the ideas that get discarded along the way, and how that wasted human work behind the media is an aspect of tragedy. The idea in this hypothetical rewrite would be to discuss kart races as a method to write about the insidious nature of corporate branding. I think that video as a one sentence concept sounds pretty good, but it still wouldn't have been the right video to make. The reason I wanted to make this video in the first place was to discuss two games that I like. It wasn't a springboard to a wider discussion, it was the entire point. It might not have been what I'd consider within my expectations or style, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't a video that could have been fun. Perhaps more importantly, it would have been a video that was being made from a place that was genuinely what I wanted to make. What I should have focused on was unrelated to the scope of the video. Instead, it should have remained a smaller size with focus more on presentation. I should have made a fireworks display, something to inspire the emotion of what I couldn't describe instead of trying to put it into words. You don't make great work by conforming to your idea of what's good, you make it because that's the work that you wanted to make. Sometimes that fits within your expectations, and sometimes it doesn't. Despite the saying, I believe style can be substance. In the absence of words to say, you perform the actions that portray intent and feeling. The beauty of the human experience is that we can find value in both, the smart and the stupid. When you become trapped by your own expectations, however, you might find a reluctance to engage with both as they come and go. The tool for the job isn't what tool you expect, it's what tool produces the best results.